We are going to Sao Paulo for the Pokemon International Championships. This is like definitely the furthest I've ever traveled for Pokemon. We're gonna have three flights uh, to Brazil, which uh, is combined like, I don't even know how many hours I'm getting there actually. Tomorrow morning, it is noon right now and my first flight leaves at three. So just a massive, massive amounts of flights. I don't know how I'm gonna sleep on the plane. I am kind of horrified, but uh, hopefully we do sleep through the night. My last flight is from 9 p.m. today to nine tomorrow morning. It's also a three hour time change. So uh, gonna be a little bit tricky to get used to. I've been waking up a little bit early over the last couple of days to try to get accustomed to it. And it is also the first Paradox Rift legal tournament. Like, I don't even know what to expect. I, I don't even, like, I don't know if people are gonna be playing like Iron Valiant or like, how many people are gonna be playing Iron Hands or like, I, I have no idea what the meta is gonna be like. And I don't think anyone else really knows either. So I guess we'll just go there, try our best, bring our good old friend, Chin Pao, and just see uh, how he does in Brazil. All right, we have arrived. I didn't record anything in the airports because that's lame, but we arrived and uh, I think I flew from three o'clock my time to 9 a.m. this time. So it's been a very, very long day slash multiple days of flying, but we're here and I guess they haven't turned on our amenities. So I'm still sweating and none of the lights will turn on. Are you bringing a flashlight in the bathroom? I did. <laughs> Well, that's how we solved that problem, I guess. Wait, do you have an act? No, do you have an actual flashlight? Yeah. What? No shot. Not when you see this. This man's got a real flashlight. That's crazy. That's crazy. Does your phone have a flashlight? It does. I have two flashlights. Two flashlights. Yeah, so it's like 100 degrees here in Sao Paulo. So um, I don't know a whole lot we can do. And then also, uh, it's going to be raining this weekend, but... Tournaments tomorrow, I think I'm pretty locked in the 60, but yeah, it's really, really sweaty here. Um, and um, please help me. I mean, I like standing, so we'll be here for a minute. I don't, so I'm ready for this to be over. Oh, this is kind of sick. Yo. We got checked in, but they won't actually give us play mats and stuff until tomorrow. And let's hope I don't forget, like I did in Toronto. Cause uh, I feel like this one's gonna be worth something. It's a uh, salmon. Can you sure? I don't have mine out. They, yeah, they got the, it's paradox. They got all the paradox Pokemon. Oh, green tail. Yeah, it's, I wanted the Iron Hands one. And super cool that it's not just like the starters. It's actually something cool. But I'm still very tired. I think we're gonna get some electrolytes or something, and then head to bed. We're currently uprooting the fridge because uh, salmon bought. Did he buy grape? I brought tea and citrus drink and a bunch of power aids. And I want to put them somewhere. I got some stuff too. We got like all of this for like, what did we spend combined? Like $40? Not even, I spent $20. We spent like $20 for like- I spent $7.50. $7.50? I think I spent like $7.50 for all of this. Uh, I couldn't, okay, so I know this one's shampoo because it says shampoo. But the other one, um, it says cream care. So I'm gonna hope that you put this on your body because I don't really know it. Oh, dude, no. They didn't have a whole, they didn't know they have a whole wall of lotion. Oh yeah. Can you ready to lock in the winning 60? It's gonna win the whole tournament. I'm gonna use a coin. Right here. Like an actual coin to flip, flip it. Oh, like an actual coin? <laughs> all right, here it is in all of its glory. The championship 60. That has come a long way in terms of like art. I still kind of, I don't really have bling ultra balls or candies completely. And uh, don't tell anyone about this. <laughs> I just happen to have this lightning energy, but we're playing uh, the Iron Hands. And this is also my first time running double bib. So uh, we'll see how I do. Last two regionals I ran wrote on. This version of Chin Pao plays so much different from the actual Chin Pao, like the one that I've been used to playing for the whole season. So we'll see how I do. Uh, it's still kind of the same fundamentally. We're still trying to get set up. But first time playing double bib, first time playing in Brazil, first time playing Iron Hands, first time playing Counter Catcher, first time playing against Paradox Rift decks. Oh my God. It's going to be an insane day tomorrow. So I'm just going to submit my deck list and yeah, let's just hope for the best. Rise and shine, gamers. I actually got sleep. Yeah. This is, I think this is both of our first IC that's not at AIC. Correct. So this is going to be interesting. I think, what do we have? Like two hours? hour and a half, four round one starts. We're gonna go to the 
the little grocery store on, on the way there get to see breakfast. if you get some breakfast, try to get like a pastry or I don't think they're gonna have a brown sugar shaken whatever Starbucks latte I get. So that will suck, but it's okay. And we're gonna get our playmat. We need our playmat stuff too, which I probably should get there later. Like, but yeah. I wanna look at your face. There's a lot of people here. I'm sweaty. It is around, I can't read my watch. It's 8.35. Uh, round should start at 9. But from the looks of it, I don't know if they're out starting at 9. We are finally in the venue. This is kind of insane. We see. Oh, wait, I think our pairing's up. Looks like people are sitting down. Is it actually starting at 9? There's no way. There's no way. No way. People are like already sitting down. Uh, I don't know what's happening. Alright, well, we're gonna figure this out. This will be tricky. Alright, I still can't believe I am competing in Brazil like it it's all just very surreal like it, I, the only IC I've ever been to is NAIC so this whole thing is just nuts so round one I hit uh, Maridon we got there I uh, 2 would him and it was very odd because game one looked very sketchy I kept getting passed to death essentially and uh, eventually just got out of it but barrel just draws cards uh, he tried to zero or stall for one turn and uh, I got turn two Iron Hands because I vesseled. Uh, I got the lightning energy because I knew that was just a line. He could just retreat into one prize or in pass. And it ended up just paying off. I discarded the lightning right away. He path judged me turn, I think it's turn two. Yeah, eventually just got the turn two Iron Hands and was able to just go two, two, and two. Um, but it took a long time for game one. So game two, I had the worst possible opening hand. I like started Matafee, two Ultra Balls, Irida, was going first because he opted to go second. So I was like, oh no. Um, very real chance that I get donked here. Ultra Ball for Chin Pao, uh, retreated, shiv or I escape rope, Shivery Chilled, Ultra Ball for Frigidback. So I didn't have a bib roll out until turn whatever. But I played my cards correctly. He didn't get path when he needed to. And I was able to close out the game. I just kept taking, took like a one prize at the beginning. We we're like one, two, two, one or something. One, two, one, two. Uh, so I won the game a little slower, but he also didn't have much because his strongest board was Judge and he didn't really attack me. So yeah, uh, we are 1-0 at LAIC. Let's just keep it going, I guess. There's just so much. I still haven't got my playmat. I don't, I don't know where I'm supposed to get my playmat. <laughs> I'm gonna like ask around here. We haven't got our playmats uh, or any of the swag from LAIC. And I kind of wanted Paradox Mines are cool. So yeah, hopefully I continue it in round two. That one was a weird one. So I played against Nick Robinson. I'm not gonna go too much into detail, but I won game one, he was playing Guardi. Game two, uh, he had advantage, but it was like, game one was a solid 40 minutes. And basically, uh, he told me to speed up. So I said, oh, my bad. I mean, to play slow. Uh, so I sped up, uh, like immediately. And then time was called on his turn, so it was impossible for him to win, so I pretty much had it. And I guess he tried to like, say, hey, like, we can tie because I saved you from a game loss in round one. And I'm like, yeah, but those aren't the rules. So I'm gonna take my win, please. So um, yeah, I just felt weird though. He obviously, he was very unhappy. So that was round two. Round three finished. This deck was crazy. So he started Roaring Moon. I thought he was playing Roaring Moon. So I said, oh no, I chose to go first. Uh, he goes Pokestop away, Comfy Cram. I go, what? So he discards both of those. I say, okay, he's playing Lost Box Roaring Moon. That's really cool. So then I get to a point where I'm like, I don't want him to snipe my fridge back, so I get out Manaphy. And then he goes Attach Fire Energy. I'm like, Sable Zard Roaring Moon? So it was a super cool deck, and uh, I think it was sort of geared to beat Shen Pao, and I had a really tough time against it. Game one, uh, I did not get there. I think I was so, so, so close to getting like, the Iron Hands when I needed it, but he played a Roxanne and an Iono, and I just didn't know that because he milled the Roxanne and he hit me with the Iono late game and then Sable Snipe my bib. And I had like Ultra Ball SE, I had like Irida and Ultra Ball and a Poke Stop, and now I draw it. And I was like, let me know in the comments if you can actually figure out how to do this sequence. I might try when I get back, but uh, basically, I was trying to get Iron Hands out in the active position. Uh, with no energy on board, and I could not figure out how to do it. There was no chip on the board either. Yeah, so I lost game one. Game two, I thought I had a horrible start. I go, uh, get out my stuff, shivery chill, get out my fridge backs, go. Uh, he starts uh, an energy, a uh, Jirachi, and then he, he draws, attaches, and then like energy 
Excel, whatever the attack is called, and I'm like, oh yeah, I just win. And then game three was also really, really close. We got down to, uh, it was neck and neck, and I think he whiffed a few crucial turns, which allowed me to pull ahead. But I haven't been playing the best. Uh, I'm really hungry, and uh, time was, time's been called by now, so I can't really, uh, I just, I got a waffle, so hopefully it'll like tie me up. Um, until I can actually get food. My games keep going to time. I just want to finish some games so I can eat an actual meal because uh, my head's going a little woozy. So, <laughs> but yeah, 3-0 going into round four. Feels pretty good. So I guess we'll just keep it up. Iron Hands is uh, carrying my god-awful sequencing. So not even mad about that. I actually cannot believe that the shortest round of the day was the mirror match. I was not expecting that to be literally my shortest round. Uh, so yeah, I hit the power mirror. Uh, I think game one I went second, so obviously if you go second you don't have advantage, you uh, usually can just get two prizes, especially with Iron Hands. They can t always take the first two prizes a lot of the time, so um, I was hoping he would whiff it. Unfortunately he did not whiff it um, and got the first two prize cards, but then there was a, there was a time I think when he countercatchered my back Scalibur, which I think lost him the game. If he didn't do that, I think, if you just kill my Chen Pao, I just kept going 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Like, I don't see how I would have won that, but because he killed my back Excalibur, I was able to Irida, get another one out. Yeah, and I think that was our game uh, one. Uh, and in our game two, I my hand was god-awful. My hand was god-awful game three, too. Game one, I think I started Iron Hands. I think I've been having pretty not-so-great variants with, like, starts and stuff. I think I've started Iron Hands twice already, which <laughs> is kind of uh, insane. At least it's not the 70 HP Fridge backs. I guess it could be... Worse. Uh, the Iron Hands is definitely worse. So yeah, I uh, game two I just immediately scooped, and then game three, I ended up winning. So we are four and zero. Oh. I'll go back in. I still have like a half-eaten burger. I need to eat my burger. Like find some water. It's decently cool, but I'm kind of feeling more fatigued than I normally am. Just the temperature. I'm pretty sure outside it is like it is 97 degrees outside, 96 degrees. It says heat wave and more. So. Uh, the more is just more heat wave. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna focus on that. Uh, I'll get the mat later. Like, I'm pretty sure I have the entire weekend to get it, right? So we still have two more days. I'm not in any rush. I just have to remember to do it. The first I see of the year. Feels good. Uh, I gotta keep my guard up. I mean, there's some really good players here. I'm just going to try to stay as healthy and hydrated and well-fed as I can because the heat is definitely taking a toll, but I think it's taking a toll on my opponents too. I think it's taking a toll on everyone equally. I think I should get some more water. I've gone through a few water bottles already. Yeah, four now in round five. All right, so uh, the last round was round five. I played against Gardevoir. Uh, game one, I think I scoop on turn two because he hits like Avery Screamtail Rare Candy EX and I'm like, and kills my only Frigibax. Like, I, I guess I should have discarded Iron Hands or something, but I'm like, bro, you can have it. Like, <laughs> just like, I probably messed up and I'm like, you can have it. Uh, he, uh, game two uh, was very long. I think he should have just probably just scooped early, but you, obviously you can't ask people to scoop. It was, I was just so far ahead. And then he was just doing all this stuff and I'm like, all right, dude. Uh, and, uh, and so, oh, I forgot to mention, we got deck checked at the beginning. This is relevant. Game three, he's like, there's five minutes left. And he's like, do you want to play it out? I'm like, yeah, like one of us could talk. Uh, the other, so then we played it out. Uh, I got we both got really good starts. It was one minute on the clock, and I'm just like, dude, it's one minute. And he's like, all right, yeah, we fist bump it out. He goes to the match slip circles tie, and then on there, I see what a judge wrote like plus eight minutes for deck check. And I'm like, dude, we had eight minutes, and he's like, <laughs> just like we're so stupid. But then I just flipped over my so this was after we scooped up all of our cards. Right, so like we're, we're, already, we're already just out of the game. We scooped up all of our cards, we circled tie, it's like the game's over. Uh, I flipped over my prizes and it was Iron Hands and he's like, I had to scream tail this turn, like turn two, uh, on my only Bidoof. And so I was like, okay, I think I would have lost anyways. So I guess I'm happy I got the tie, but... Cause the matchup is so interesting, cause like, I think I have to assume they're always going to scream tail or Avery or something like that. Uh, I think I don't really care about scream tail that much if I have a full bench. But the thing I usually do is I usually get four on bench, right? So I can leave room for Iron Hands. But if I do that, then I have its POW active, because obviously, uh, Ninja Bent. Maybe that's my problem. Nah, nah, POW's broken. Uh, so POW active, Ninja, Frigibax, Frigibax, Bidoof. That, that's my board. And I consistently get that. And I'm always like, ah, do I bench the other Bidoof? I think it's always correct to, 
right? Because like they want to take the fast prize. And if they snipe, see, I don't know though, because then if I, if I bench lock myself with the doofs, then they go scream tail fridge. And then I can't, I need to play the second fridge or else I lose the counter catcher. Okay, I think, I guess, I guess I tactically did the right thing. It's just kind of hard. Uh, I'll think about it a little more. Maybe there's hands where I just don't get out. Greninja? Like, I don't actually know. I, I, Guardi just does not seem like a great matchup anymore. Uh, I kind of wish I was playing Rodom, like, a little bit. I feel like it's very even, though. Like, it's very even, and it's a very, I have a very fighting chance against it. Like, it's not, like, they don't win or anything. Uh, I think I've technically beat it more than I've lost in games. I'm dehydrated and out of water, so we need to find water. But yeah, doing pretty well. All right, this update is featuring we got Pikachu. So yeah, uh, round number six, I played against another Sablezard. I guess there are more than one person playing Sablezard. So basically, yeah, so he ran the Galarian Moltres version, which I didn't even know existed. Um, my first Sablezard opponent ran Moon. Uh, it was pretty, really close games. We were kind of trading even, because I got hands. He went Radzard, and then I went Ninja, ki ninja Kill whatever. He went super odd, nest ball, gate, counter catcher, switch. I'm like, nah. So I pretty much like Iron Hands just kind of carried. Whenever he break, it's Iron Hands, Iron Hands, Iron Hands. So we are 5 0 and 1, going into round 7, which is nuts. Uh, one more and I'm in, and I'm not IDing, which also feels awesome. Just keep winning, I guess. Dude, why? I, dude, I had no chance. I don't know if you saw, I was streamed. They're interviewing my opponent right now. I got bodied. There's not, there literally nothing I could do. I. Could have started with the 70 HP Frigibax. I could have nest balled that out. He flipped over Entei. Like, I thought he was like playing Zard or something. I had no idea what he was playing. He gets like turn one yoga loop. I'm like, okay. And then like every time I'm like, I'll just set up something else. And then he's like yoga loop. I'm like, okay. Like I just got blown out both games. Like I, I everyone keeps saying like I'm stream curse. I think I am. I'm happy I'm just not, like, I'm just happy I'm not, like, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little tilted, like, uh, yeah, it, a game's a game. If that's my one loss of the day, sure, it, like, you can have it, buddy. <laughs> I don't know if I made it clear that I was streamed against uh, Entei Valiant. I'm assuming everyone saw it, it was like an IC stream. I just had to watch as my horrible starting end, but no battle pass, he just raw opened two of them. I'll get over it. Probably not ever. I'm never gonna get over it. It's okay. So we're, I guess we're five one and one going into. <laughs> dude, that was crazy. I got blown out, dude. I don't care. Oh, Jared should have attached the energy to the. I, he killed everything. I had nothing. <laughs> I, I got. I tried to give him the. Nope. Kill it. Die. He plays twelve switch cards. It's okay. Like if, if anyone needs any more proof I'm stream cursed, there it is. All right, I gotta get over this. I'm gonna walk it off. It's funny because Noah was joking about being here and him and uh, Alex Shemansky playing it. Alex Shemansky's not here. So he lied about both of those things. And uh, he was like, oh, we're playing Ante Valiant. I'm like, that's crazy. I'm like, I think I'm okay into that. I play it. I, Alex Shemansky, I went my phone. He said, told you. <laughs> he said, told you. Uh, oh, whatever. Okay, I'm just gonna walk it off. I need to stop thinking about it. Just walk it off, we got two more, just gotta win one, then we're competing tomorrow, so. Oh good. Th this was like the biggest emotional roller coaster. So I was 501, like killing it. Hit the Ante Valley on that stream. Round eight, I played against John Ang playing Fusion Mew. Game one, I accidentally Poke stopped the second time. It was a DPL and I lost. And then game two, yeah, so, and then game three, I just bricked. So I won game two. The matchup isn't that bad against Fusion. And then round number nine was against Path Rod. It was literally winning in it. Was, I was 5 2 1. I was like very upset. But I got something to eat and uh, played against Path Rod. We just went to game three. I lost game one, I won game two, and then game three, we got there. All of our SCRs were hiding at the bottom of the deck. And I eventually just joined all of them because they're all just there. So I, we are 6 2 1 going into day two. It is like 10 o'clock and we haven't had dinner yet, which is absolutely mad. This guy made day two also. Yeah! This is the first day two in like what? 2017. So five million, six, six years. Five million years. Yeah. He hasn't made day two in five million yeah, years. We got there. He's there, and we can I like. I got to ID round nine. Yeah, that's crazy. I wish, dude. <laughs> I was having such low stress, dude. I was stressing like so hard. But yeah, we're gonna wake up for day two and uh, kick butt. Rise and shine, gamers. We're going to day two, and I'm really tired. And it's like 7:40, and we think day two is starting at nine. Nine. Yeah. Get some breakfast from the waffle truck. Waffles, waffles. All right, we can finally do the tripod setup because it is day two and it's a lot more calm in the convention center. So my round 10 was against, I didn't know what it was at first because this mulligan hand 
had Mirage Gate, Echoing Horn, and Canceling Cologne. So I was like, I had no idea what this guy was playing. Uh, but it was, it ended up being Lost Box Kyogre. I saw that energy recycler hit and he showed me at the end of our match. Um, our game one, I got a turn two Iron Hands and he didn't really have a good start. Uh, so I won the flip, went first, got turn two Iron Hands. He scooped pretty much right away. Uh, and then game two, I had nothing. I went Shivery Chill, like attach, pass going second. And uh, he was just cranking choruses. He went rope, spit kill my Bidoof. And I was like, if I don't top deck anything, I just lose. And I drew, and it was a battle pass. So I said, all right, we're going to game three. And I think at that point, only like 10 minutes, uh, it was like 10 or 12 minutes have <laughs> gone by. So I'm like, all right, all right, bro. We got, we got a lot of time for game three. Um, so game three went very similar to game one in that I did also get a turn two Iron Hands and uh, he could not find the chorus. So uh, our games just ended pretty promptly with Iron Hands being the uh, just absolutely dominating two out of the three games <laughs> against Lost Box. I think there's a considerable amount of loss here, so I'm happy that I'm playing it. Uh, so we are seven, two, and one. Just funny because I started seven, one, one at Toronto and then lost one. So I guess we're doing the same as we were in Toronto. So uh, yeah, seven, two, one going into round 11. All right, so round 11 didn't go uh, as well as I would have hoped and as well as my board state was. I think I had a little bit of a resource mismanagement there. Uh, basically, I, I my starting hand, it was tough because I had like all of my superiors and, and uh, all my superiors and my rods and energy, like it was just clogging up my hand, but the rest of it was good. So I, um, I had like a really good setup and I just like my, my approach in the games is just kind of run while you're ahead you know what I mean like if you have a if you have a line go for it so I did uh, not knowing that the last SER was prized and yeah basically uh, so sorry this was game three game one and two game one I uh, uh, I think I won game one because um, he bricked and then game two I bricked and then game three yeah, then game three, I had a really good start and he didn't really have much. Uh, there was a point in time when I did realize that the last SCR was prized. So I had a POW. Uh, I, I, I wanted to promote the Iron Hands to so leave the energy on POW actually. But I think it was just like the second before I realized that the SCR was prized. Um, so I should have done this promoted Iron Hands and just gone for it. I should have known the last SCR was prized a turn prior uh, because. I figured, I figured if I whiffed the, um, the iron, because I, I didn't have the lightning. There was no lightning to discard, no lightning in my hand. So I needed the vessel or the lightning. So it's pretty likely there's two lightnings in my deck. I had like a bib and like a concealed cards, right? I think I could have gotten it, but I promoted the POW just to be safe. Uh, so then I went, I had just enough energies to have one lightning, one water left over, and I went uh, retreat into the iron. So I was, that's when I realized that my last SCR was prized. I was deciding whether to attack with the active or retreat in Iron Hands. And my logic was this, I said, okay, at this point in time, I have no energies left. I need to pick the thing that has the highest likelihood of working out for me. So I retreated in Iron Hands and just went for it. Uh, even though he had Brad's on bench, immediate respond, I said, okay, I'm just gonna go for it. Uh, and I whiffed it. So the SCR was in the last two prizes, game three, and uh, yeah, we didn't get there. It just, it just sucks, I gotta go, I gotta, uh, lose like that, but hopefully we can come back. I think we just need to go like four and two overall to make 64. So pretty good odds of doing that. I'm one and one. We have four more rounds left. My record is seven, three and one. So not the greatest, but we've been here before and we've still gotten 64. So I, I'm confident that I can uh, pull through. So let's see what happens. All right. So I have not been having the best day. Uh, I'm gonna try to recap everything uh, as best as I can. So I played against uh, Pedro Petruski, uh, who was on stream, like very, very talented player. And uh, we took it to game three, and uh, I can't remember how that one ended. Oh yeah, game two, uh, I had the game, game two, it was against Charizard, and I I just had out a chimp how under collapse. I just had five Pokemon under collapse. Uh, I get a game loss, we go to game three, and he gets catcher on my whatever, and I lose. Then, um, I played against uh, another Lugia, and this one went better. I thought we were kind of on an upward trend. I iron hands for three prizes, did everything I absolutely needed to do. 
and uh, we got the win. So at that point, I was like, all right, a few more. The guy was what? Uh, eight, four, and one at that point. Then for the second to last round of the day, I hit Charizard, and I have never had anything as weird as this in my life. I need to get this checked out and really like take care of myself. Um, game three, we were rushing because like I thought I was going to win game two. He thought I was going to win game two. But I ended up losing game two because he made a comeback at the end. His Charizard plays are really good. Game three, I'm rushing. I, I, I'm trying to get a turn to Iron Hands. So I play Irida. I look through my deck like five times and don't see either back Scalper. So I'm fully convinced both of them are prize. Uh, so then I'm trying to play like um, both of them are prize. I take one prize off a of Chin Pao with no backs. Uh, then at the end of the game, I flip over my prizes, or I scoop like the next turn because I'm like, I can't take any knockouts. No backs were there. My deck, there were two backs. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, I just like actually scoop for no reason. And then just from that point on, my, like, I can't like see very well. So I'm like, I don't know. I'm going to take it easy. Um, I'm just going to see my standings and then probably just go back to the room. Get some AC. Like, this heat is really getting to me. It has been a really wild weekend. Oh, and then I forgot to mention, my last round opponent just scooped me. He was the judge, and he was like, he just came up and he was just like, hey, I'm just getting people to win. And I was like, oh my God, dude, you have, I thought, what I thought was a very, very unlucky day turned out to be like, I guess, nice in the end, but I still wish I would have performed better. Uh, just the fact that I didn't get any sleep, on the ride here, the plane ride here, I didn't get that much sleep last night. I got like four hours of sleep in like two nights ago. So it was fine yesterday, but eventually just the heat and stuff caught up to me. And I guess it's now affecting my vision. So like, I need to get my water and stuff like that, make sure uh, make sure I'm good for the uh, rest of the day. But we're done, so no more playing Pokemon. Uh, we ended with nine, five, and one, which I don't know what that puts me. Uh, doesn't look like my resistance is very good. It looks like 46%. So I think I'm ranked 59 right now. So maybe, just maybe, we can squeak into 64. We got at least 100 championship points, which now puts us at 441, which honestly exceeds expectations. I didn't even know if I was going to make day two. I didn't know what people were going to play in this format. I made day two. Yeah, no, it's, and it's also just super stressful, like the IC two-day tournament. Right, you're just playing so many rounds. And it's just like the fatigue is like so, so, so real. But yeah, we ended with nine, five, and one, which I, I think nine wins is not bad at all um, for the tournament. I ended up top 128 in the tournament, uh, which obviously wasn't what I was expecting, but we got 100 championship points, so can't be upset about that. Uh, I went and watched uh, top eight, uh, with the Snorlax stall, which was fun, and uh, started to watch Hot 4 with my friends, and just decided, uh, you know, just to, I was feeling horrible with the heat and everything, just wanted to get back to the hotel, didn't really want to wait for anyone, I just, like, absolutely wanted to go, Want, almost got an Uber, because it was kind of dark, but I was just like, just go back to the hotel, it was like a 20 minute walk, whatever. So it was very dark out, um, so I'm walking back by myself, like, trying to find another maps, you know, obviously being like alert that somebody tries talking to me in Portuguese. I just keep walking past. I don't want to be robbed or anything. Um, I'm walking across the street and like this bicyclist just kind of like runs a red and just kind of swerves right in front of me, you know, and I'm just like, that was weird. So I'm like on my phone with the maps, I swipe to the messages and I'm like texting my friends about it. Like as I'm crossing the street before I can even respond like this, the, a bike just zooms past me and my phone is gone from my hand. Like I look up and then the guy's just zooming in the traffic. And, I, and so I just go in the primal in Sigma. I just start chasing him and like, you give me that. Like, give it back. I was sprinting after him. And it was just like a primal instinct, I guess. And I was sprinting, dodging cars, whatever. And I realized that I'm not gonna catch up to this guy going full speed on a bike. I didn't even hear him come up. It was, everything happened like that. And so I just, I just kind of went into a panic. Like I was on the streets of Sao Paulo, no directions, no service, nobody was there, nothing. Um, thankfully I wasn't too far from the convention center. So I was just trying to, I saw the only thing I was worried about was, I was trying to find 
Wi-Fi because I had my, thank God I had my iPad on me. So I had my iPad just in case Pokesets broke. <laughs> but that, that never happened, but the iPad was in my backpack. So went to Russia and tried to get some Wi-Fi, ran into some security guards who of course don't speak English. So we took a while to communicate. I tried to ask them how to get back to the hotel. Uh, they eventually told me it was like, okay, the light turned right. Um, I tried to do their navigation. I couldn't find anything. So I just went back to the convention center. Um, I'm like just all doused in sweat, like panting and like freaking out. Um, I just get in and I just sit on the ground and I just whip up my iPad, frantically trying to find internet and just freaking out. Um, a security guard sees me and from in the convention center, he doesn't speak much English either. Uh, he comes over and he like pulls out his translator and, you know, like asks me what's, what's wrong essentially. And I tell him, I'm like, hi, I just need Wi-Fi. I, I'm at the Pokemon convention right there. He's just like, where are you from? I'm at the Pokemon convention right there, right? I just need Wi-Fi. And so he gave me his phone hotspot. Uh, I was able to lock, erase my iPhone from within to find my iPhone for, from iPad. So thank you, Apple, was able to do that. He couldn't access any of my information. That's really all I'm concerned about. Um, at that point, like I, I knew my phone was gone. Like I wasn't going to chase after the guy and, and track him down with the phone tracker. And it's just like, I'll, it's like, yeah, yes. I had like an iPhone pro, it's like a thousand dollars, like total, but like my life is worth way more than any amount of money. So I figured I, I, the phone's replaceable, right? I'm not. And so I was so super flustered and I was just trying to find a way to like, I, I didn't know what to do. I was like trying to contact my family, whatever. I was trying to reschedule my flight. Cause I'm like, I got to get out of here. Like I got to get out of this place. Um, I was just freaking out, trying to ask my friends for hotspots, whatever. Um, I walked back with Solomon eventually. Uh, one of the security guards who found me earlier actually pulls us aside and eventually translate. He says that sometimes stolen cell phones do show up and, um, and that, so he asked for a contact number. We gave him Solomon's, but Solomon doesn't have service. So if they contact us, no one would know, <laughs> but, uh, they gave him his number and, um, and my name, just in case my phone is found, but I'm like not expecting anything of it. Like, he probably snatched it, probably sold by now. I mean, like it's an, it's an iPhone in like Brazil. Like there's no iPhones here. It's only like, mostly just like the most common finding is like a hundred dollar, like Samsung. That's what was advertised in the stores. That's what everyone was buying. Um, like everything is like super cheap here. Like the income is uh, like way lower, I know. And so the iPhone is like a brick of gold. So like that thing's gone and I, I know it's gone. And I kind of just went into this like panic, like this paranoid panic. And I was just freaking out and like stressing like for hours. And uh, it wasn't even the fact that my phone was stolen. It was just like, the f I, I had something, like I use my phone every day for you know, various things and it just got snatched from me. So I felt like violated in a way. Um, and that like my whole trip was like, I was already having kind of a rough time as you probably saw, but like that was just, that was just too much for me to handle, especially late and you know, a little jittery, but like, yeah, it took like a several hours of like talking with friends and family extensively for me to finally calm down. And, um, I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of like looking at it as like, I, I never have had the fear of, of being robbed or, or anything like that in us like that's never even crossed my mind that somebody was going to like zoom by on a bike and snatch my phone out of my hands and it happened five minutes outside the, outside the convention center so like i'm safe and everything like that like my health wasn't put at risk so call me i'm, I'm like calming down now and just kind of realizing that like i'm safe i just don't have a phone i'm tethered to wi-fi just like solomon like we're not really uh, losing a whole lot other than my crippling addiction to Twitter, which I can do without for a couple days, hopefully, and go through withdrawals. But yeah, I uh, tried to reschedule my flight, but Delta says I couldn't. But just an absolute insane way to end the day. I still have, I guess, all of tomorrow, and um, my flight leaves on Monday, um, and I have no phone, and there's no like Verizon in Brazil, so. I just need to go the whole time without a phone, uh, as long as I can get my boarding pass and everything for the plane. 
Then I'm able to get home. Uh, once I get, you know, back to the States, I can, um, I, I also contacted Apple and I didn't get the Apple Care with steel protection. I just got the Apple Care Plus without that protection so they can cover nothing, which is insane. So I have like credit cards and stuff that might cover it. I, I need to do some research just so I'm not paying like, like $2,000 out of pocket or something, right? Because I'm still on a contract with this phone. It's like the iPhone upgrade plan. And it's like, am I paying a contract for a phone I don't own? I don't get it. And the Apple people aren't any help. So um, I'm calming down a bit now, just kind of, I don't know, just kind of realizing just how it, I just, my phone got stolen. I was doing all of fine and dandy and little, little miss, Mr. Privilege going down to Brazil and this phone just got snatched right from us. It's like things like that happen, you know? And it's like, I've never, I just don't experience that. And um, it's just absolutely crazy. Like, series of events and things that happened this weekend. Um, builds character is all I can say. We're building character. Um, but I guess this is just kind of an insane addition to the vlog because it has nothing to do with Pokemon. But it was like a very integral part of what happened. And uh, I hope I can deal with it and we can like move forward. But that was that. And hopefully I can, yeah, again, just <laughs> somehow have a good rest of the weekend with that happening. You're watching the finals, the Latin American International Championships. Say hi, everyone. We just watched Ente Valiant win juniors, and now we're watching Maradon win, I guess? This thing panned over me several times for way too long. So if you see me on the official stream, that's why. Maradon just won seniors. Enthusiasm in the States, that's for sure. <laughs> we made our debut, debut on the stream with the Wojak face. <laughs> Incredible. All right, so I'm uh, back in the hotel room. Uh, I didn't really feel comfortable, I guess, recording outside with my camera because uh, obviously because I was just on my phone uh, last night and it was swiped by a, um, a, a passerby biker. So I was like, I'm not about to just walk around with the, yo, what's up guys in the streets of Brazil and just have the camera, whoa, where are you going? You know what I mean? So anyways, uh, today was, I watched the junior finals, the senior finals, uh, master finals, uh, had some games with some friends, had some food with some friends, uh, just hung out and, um, yeah, this, this was a trip of all time. Like, I gotta say that much. Um, I'm still definitely shook by, I guess, what, what happened last night. Uh, and I guess the entire trip was was a little disappointing. I mean, I, I didn't wanna, nobody wa wants to go through the heat, heat fatigue and all that stuff. It definitely just goes to show how the world is different and people are different and cultures are different. And I think coming here was just very enlightening to show that just something that I take for granted in uh, the United States, such as just walking down the streets without, you know, walking down the streets with my phone out. Like that's something I can do all the time. I've never had to worry about that. And just the simple fact of that was literally like stolen, like a thousand dollars. I have to like, <laughs> like, I, you know, spend for something I don't have. Yeah. I think it was just like a valuable lesson for me just because I've been very, I guess, secluded off in, you know, I, I work from home. I'm in my like high rise luxury apartment, <laughs> like just living there. And I don't really have a, a anything going wrong in my life. I nothing to worry about. And then I come here and then nearly suffer a heat stroke and have my phone still. And like within three days, like it's just, and it was just like eye opening, right? So if you ever do come to LAIC, do not like be carrying your phone or any valuables just outside. Like that, you just cannot do that. Make sure to travel in groups, like always. Always have multiple people walking around. And it's just those small things, if you do that, then 
the chances of anything bad happening go down exponentially. This was definitely a trip of all time. Sorry I didn't get to record much of the city or anything like that. Yeah, as you probably saw earlier, like the energy in the energy in that room is electric. Like those people chanting, oh, they, oh, they. I mean, that that was just like the spirit of the game to a whole nother level, and you don't get that anywhere else. Like you only get that here, and oh my god, like it was an experience. The people here were so nice, you know, nothing but funny and laughter and joy. It reminded me of playing Pokemon in Japan, like where most of them were like very nice and kind and welcoming and really just fun to be around people. Like I feel like in the US, a lot of people kind of get stuck in competing and uh, literally my round nine opponent, it was the winning in and we were just laughing and cracking up the whole time. And uh, I remember he was playing Maridon and he, uh, he slept. I thought I had an advantage, so I was feeling good. He played Path Judge, and then he just stares at me. And he's like, <laughs> broken. <laughs> like he was, it was, I was like cackling so loud. All the other tables were like, Ooh. you know, because they're all trying to, you know, obviously win and in. We were both 5 2 1, trying to win in the 6 2 1. But me and my opponent were just cracking up. I mean, like, uh, these, these, these people were so much fun. So we are now sitting at 448 championship points out of 600 and I think I'm actually approaching top 16. Like I think the cutoff is probably somewhere around like 500 or above that after LAIC points roll and I'll have to check, but I should actually be within like the top, maybe top 32 of North America, which is crazy. I would have never imagined, you know, that I would, I would be within the, like the top players of North America. It's just super cool. And I think doing it all with Shin Power is I think the funniest part. I think, I think the fact we played the same deck the whole time is just hilarious. But I'm gonna keep practicing. I'm gonna keep training. The good news is that my flight is actually tomorrow. I think everyone is leaving uh, tonight, which is Sunday night and flying overnight. And uh, I flew overnight on the way here, as you heard and uh, it was miserable, so I'm happy I get to like not have to fall asleep on the plane. Maybe I'll take a nap or something, but but yeah, that was the Latin American International Championships for the 2024 season, and we have San Antonio in like less than a month. We're gonna tweak up our list a little bit, learned a lot from Brazil, and all we do is get better and improve, and we're not gonna have a heat stroke because it's winter in the northern hemisphere <laughs> of the globe down here in the summer. Heat stroke. Very likely up there, no heat sickness. Yeah, hope you all enjoyed this vlog. Again, I'll, I'll try to do more of the city stuff for San Antonio, uh, where I won't get my camera stolen. But yeah, hope you all enjoyed the video and I will see you all next time.